interesting story. He said that one person in Russia, one Jew that came from Russia, came in East Russia, he asked them, when I die, I would like you to bring a band and play music in my funeral. Trumpets, this, that, clarinet, drums. Said to him, what, you're normal? Who wants a party in his, uh, in his funeral? He said, that's it, that's, all. That's, that's my last request. Make sure, play music in my, in my funeral. They went to a big rabbi, asked him what to do. He said, call him, I want to speak to him. He came, said, tell me, why are you making us hard time? Why are you asking something not normal? Just when the time come, die peacefully and let us do what's right. No, rabbi. I insist, bring a, a band and play in my funeral. The rabbi got curious. Either it's not normal, or it has to be a secret here. So he told him, can you tell me why you insist to have a fan? So he told him, when I was in Russia, the, they used to torture the Jews. They used to kidnap people. They come, kidnap girls, kidnap children. It was horrible. Some would send to Siberia, some they would turn them into Christian, they don't even know they're Jewish. You wake up in the morning, 50 kids disappear, another 20. It was, there, it was terrible. So one time I was there, I was in charge, and I saw that they came, the Russians came, these Cossacks, and right away I gave them a lot of alcohol to drink, and I arranged few people to come and play music knowing they love alcohol and they love music. So the people play music and the Russians would drink the alcohol and they get drunk until they all fell asleep and that's how I was saving from time to time 50 kids from being kidnapped. And that's all I did in my life. I wasn't Shomer Shabbat, I wasn't putting tefillin, I wasn't eating kosher, not praying, not, nothing. One thing I did for Hashem I saved the life of hundreds of kids from being kidnapped by these wicked people. And the way I did it is I organized a band to play loud music and I put a lot of alcohol and that's how they forgot that they came to kidnap the kids. They would drink and fall asleep. So I want in my funeral that you play music because that's the only thing I can take with me to the next world. After he left, they asked the rabbi, should we bring a band? He said, no, ignore it. Tell him yes, but we're not going to play music. Why? Because people would think that we're happy that he died. That's disrespect. He doesn't see the whole picture. But I want you to tell me exactly what happened in his funeral when the time will come. Do not forget to inform me, describe to me what happened. So, what can happen? When did he die in Israel? On Purim. <laughs> Purim day. And in Israel back then they used to have a parade. At the Loyada. And in the middle of his funeral, the parade with all the loud music and trumpets, they passed right by his, by his bed. And in the mean, they got stuck there for a few minutes. And there was a Purim, Purim, there was a Purim party. <laughs> they didn't know it's a funeral. They didn't realize there's a car, his bed is in a car. There's a lot of people walking behind the car. They didn't, they didn't understand. So they were playing, drinking, happy Purim. Our Hashem arranged that his final request will be met. <laughs> That was the only thing I could say I can take with me to the next world. Even someone who didn't keep anything still felt in his heart the burn. How this Goim kidnapped the little children and turned them into idol worshipper Christians.